Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here. Today I'm doing my full review on the all-new Dell XPS 13. All new for this year is a thin and light design that just looks stunning. Let's see if this laptop is worth picking up. The Dell XPS 13 is an all-new Ultrabook for 2015. One of the biggest changes to this year's model is the tiny bezel by the screen, which Dell calls Infinity Display. The small bezels allow the XPS 13 to have a 13.3 inch screen, but the overall size feels more like an 11.6 inch laptop. And when I first held it in my hands, I was like, wow, this feels very small and lightweight. There are multiple configurations to choose from. The base model features an Intel Core i3, 128GB SSD, 4GB of RAM, and a Full HD display that retails for $799 US. The next step up is the model we have here, which has the same specs as the base model, but you get the Intel Core i5-5200U. This one retails for $899 US, and for an additional $100, you can upgrade the RAM to 8GB. You can also get the Quad HD panel configured on the XPS 13, that model retails for $12.99 US. This laptop runs Microsoft Windows 8.1, but rest assured you will be able to upgrade to Windows 10 for free within the first year. The design and build quality of the all-new XPS 13 has been spectacular. On the exterior, you get an aluminum finish that just looks stunning. The carbon fiber composite base found on last year's XPS 13 has now been replaced with aluminum. Under the XPS logo, you have your serial number and service tag information. I've been impressed by what Dell has done on the XPS 13. This laptop feels almost the size of an 11-inch MacBook Air. The weight comes in at 2.6 pounds for the non-touch, and 2.8 pounds for the Quad HD touchscreen panel. The interior features a carbon fiber palm rest with a soft touch coating that feels great when typing. And there goes those tiny bezels on the all new XPS 13 2015 edition, which Dell calls Infinity Display. Overall, I've been highly impressed with the all new XPS 13. The design and craftsmanship has been spectacular. Here goes a quick size comparison between the new XPS 13 and the 2015 X1 Carbon. As you can see here, the Dell XPS 13 is much smaller than the thinnest and lightest 14 inch Ultrabook on the planet. The only knock I have on the design and build quality of the new XPS 13 is the keyboard flex is a little bit more than I would like. Next up, let's take a look at the ports here on the left side of the laptop. Here goes your AC charging port, mini display port, USB 3.0 port, headset microphone jack combo, power status LED indicator, and your left speaker. The only con here is there's not a physical HDMI port. You're going to have to use a mini display port to HDMI adapter. On the right side, you got your security lock slot, an additional USB 3.0 port, an SD card reader, thank you Dell for finally including one. That was one of the biggest issues on last year's model. And there goes your speaker. There are two displays to choose from. The one we have here is a matte full HD non touchscreen panel. And then there is a quad HD touchscreen panel with a resolution of 3200 by 1800. Keep in mind the quad HD panel is glossy. The display performance from the full HD panel has been impressive. I've always said that Dell includes some of the best displays on the market for their laptops. The colors, contrast ratios, and brightness levels were excellent. Take a look at some of these images here. Doesn't it look gorgeous? I'm going to have to say it again. This is one of the best 1080p panels on the market that I have ever tested. And to back that up, the Spider 4 Pro Colorimeter test proved 100% of Adobe sRGB coverage. And for the Adobe RGB, I got a score of 78%. Again, with these kind of scores, you can expect excellent color gamut on this panel. The viewing angles on the Sharp XO2 panel has been great. For those of you that like to watch a movie or work on projects together, you'll definitely enjoy this IPS panel. And another nice bonus of the Full HD non-touchscreen panel is the anti-reflective coating, which it does a pretty good job at blocking out glare. Now let's see how far this panel tilts back. And that's at 100% right there. As you can see here, it is still very visible. This is one of the best IPS panels I have ever tested. The keyboard performance is good for a laptop this thin and compact. The key travel is around 1.3mm, which is adequate for a laptop this size. Keep in mind, with the smaller bezels on this laptop, some of the keys like the backspace and delete are a little smaller than last year's XPS 13. With that being said, the tactile feedback and overall typing performance was good. And some of you are wondering, is the cold wine issue still present on the new XPS 13? No, it's finally been resolved by Dell. You also get a backlit keyboard on the all new XPS 13. It's easy to read, and with two brightness levels, you'll find it easier on the eyes depending on your lightning situation. The glass based trackpad on the all new XPS 13 has been very good. The surface is very smooth, and it just feels awesome. Two finger scrolling, multi touch gestures have been flawless on this laptop. This is one of the top trackpads I have tested thus far, thanks to Dell and Microsoft. There are three Broadwell CPUs to choose from. The base model features an Intel Core i3-5010U, the next step up is an Intel Core i5-5200U, and then there is a Core i7-5500U. Since these are all dual core processors, I would just stick with the Core i5, which gives you the best performance for the money. The overall performance of the Intel Core i5-5200U has been excellent. You get a base clock speed of 2.2GHz, with the turret boost up to 2.7GHz, from basic productivity to photo and video editing, this processor has been flying through those applications with ease. And to back that up, let's go and take a look at some Geekbench 3 performance scores. This is a 64-bit version here. For the single core score, I got 2798. 
And for the multi-core score, I got 5,455. Next up is our PC Mark 8 home conventional test. I got a score of 2,339. And followed by our Cinebench R15, I got a CPU score of 251 CB. The new Broadwell chips feature better integrated graphics cards compared to last year's Haswell chips. This year, you get the Intel HD 5500, which offers 15-20% to better performance than the Intel HD 4400 it replaces. Next up, let's go and benchmark the Intel HD 5500 with 3 Mark Advanced Edition. For the Firestrike, I got a score of 721, followed by Skydiver with a score of 2,731. With Cloudgate, I got a score of 5,135. And for Ice Storm Extreme, I got a score just over 37,000. The last benchmark we have here is Cinebench R15. For the OpenGL test, I got a score of 28.92 frames per second. With these kind of scores, you can expect to play games like The Sims 3 and 4, Bioshock Infinite, Dota 2, Call of Duty Black Ops 2, Counter-Strike, and Diablo 3. Okay, enough of these benchmarks, let's go and test out the Intel HD 5500 in action with Bioshock Infinite with a resolution of 1366 by 768 on very low settings. So far, we're averaging around 31 to 34 frames per second, and as you can see here, it's still running pretty smooth with all this intense action. Alright guys, I'm about to die. Let me go and sneak up on him. Woo! Get down. You don't want none of this. So far, the performance from the Intel HD 5500 has been positive. In some benchmarks, it is just a tad lower than the dedicated NVIDIA GeForce 820M. The i5-5200U is pretty efficient. On average, the CPU temperatures are around 48 degrees Celsius. However, after playing Bioshock Infinite for 35 minutes, the CPU temperatures average around 68 degrees Celsius and a high of up to 86 degrees Celsius. Battery performance has been excellent thanks to the Sharp Exo panel, 52 watt hour battery pack, and the new Broadwell U processors. I'm able to average around 10 to 11 hours out of full charge with screen brightness at around 60%. And that was with casual web browsing, Netflix, and word processing. Now for those of you that plan on getting the Quad HD version, expect a loss of 1 to 2 hours of battery performance. One of the downsides to the Infinity Display is the tiny bezels. It leaves no room for the webcam, and therefore it has to be put on the bottom left of the panel. And here's a quick demo of the webcam. Hey, what's up YouTube's me Andrew here, testing out the new webcam on the new XPS 13 2015 edition. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. The two side facing speakers sound awesome. The lows and mids have a nice kick, and the highs are well balanced. This is one of the best sounding Ultrabooks I have heard so far. And let me give you a brief demo of the Max Audio speakers by Waves in action. First, we're going to start off at 50% and go up from there. Now let's take a look at the internal components of the all-new XPS 13. The RAM is soldered on board, and there are only two options, either 4GB or 8GB of RAM. It is disappointing that there is not a 16GB option. There goes your 128GB Samsung SSD. Since it's based on the M.2 interface, you can upgrade this component easily. The overall performance of the 128GB Samsung SSD was good, with the exception of the write speed. Upgrade to the 256GB or the 512GB for better performance. The only downside here is there's not a PCIe option for your storage. I'll dive deeper and see if the existing socket will work with the new Samsung PCIe sticks. Followed by our Broadcom 802.11ac with Bluetooth 4.0, the range has been good, and the overall stability has been great. Overall, it's a great wireless card from Broadcom. The fan noise levels on this laptop has been whisper quiet for the most part. During casual usage, you can barely hear the fan running. And I mean barely. Even when running intense CPU applications, you can hear the fan running, but it's not loud and disturbing. If you're looking for one of the best Ultrabooks on the market for 2015, then the all-new Dell XPS 13 should be on your list. You get a fast and efficient Broadwell U processors, the all-new Infinity display that just looks gorgeous, a slim and compact design, and you get that long-lasting battery life. This completes my full review on the all-new Dell XPS 13 2015 edition. If you enjoyed this review, please be sure to hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.